Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, it's very good to be back with you all today. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about trying to be positive and maintain an attitude of hope. Um, the Quran is uh, a book, uh, the pre-eternal divine speech that has healing and guidance for us. It's glad tidings and it's warnings as well. And the, the true knowers are never quenched from this spring of wisdom. Of the different verses in the Quran, what are some of the most expansive and most inspiring verses? According to Imam Ali, may God bless him, it's uh, this verse. Say, O my servants who have transgressed against their souls, do not despair of the compassion of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, he is the all-forgiving, merciful. The scholars of Tafsir, they mention a few different opinions about the occasion in which this verse was revealed. Some say that it was revealed because some of the Meccans said, Muhammad claims that whoever worships idols and commits murder will never be forgiven. And lo, we have worshiped idols and killed people. So how could we ever embrace Islam? And by extension, they were saying, and how could we hope to be forgiven? Um, some say it was uh, revealed concerning Washi, who killed uh, Sayyiduna Hamza, uh, may Allah bless him, when Washi wanted to embrace Islam, but he was worried that his repentance wouldn't be accepted. So after this verse was revealed, he embraced Islam. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam was asked, O Messenger of Allah, in this, is this verse specific to him? or for the Muslims in general? The prophet, peace be upon him, replied, nay, rather it's for the Muslims in general. And then there's another opinion. Some say the verse was revealed concerning some Muslims in Mecca who had fell into major sins and they were too ashamed to migrate to Medina. When the verse was revealed, they finally migrated. But we should never forget this principle in Quranic interpretation. Consideration is giving to the generality of the expression, not the specific circumstances in which it was revealed. So this verse applies to every single Muslim until the end of time. Sometimes we fall short, we fail to be true servants, we feel stuck and we try to right the wrong, but we can fall and then fall again so it's, it's easy to fall into despair. Uh, this is when shaitan comes and tells us we're no good and that we should give up. So sometimes we're inspired during the night, but we miss Fajr. And sometimes we feel inspired to beautify our relationship with our spouse. And then something happens and we lose our temper. Or sometimes we get a boost in our iman and we feel the energy to tackle certain addictions and struggles, but then we're triggered and we relapse. It's easy to get overwhelmed, but Allah gives this amazing promise. So in this verse, Allah commands the prophet to say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, oh my servants, he says, oh, my servants, and it's direct. There's no, there's no phrase leading up to this. And he speaks about those who, by wronging themselves, not just erring, but he speaks to us as people who've wronged themselves, and they've fallen short time and time again. And Allah says, you should never despair. And why? Why? When we disobey Allah, when we disobey God, we're not wronging God. We don't decrease God. 
we wrong ourselves, and, and that's the reality. So if someone did a sin, if someone did every single sin for a billion years, it wouldn't decrease what is with the law and it wouldn't harm a law. It only harms the person. We lose out. But what is the default mode in regards to Allah's interaction with his servants? It's Rahma. Bismillah rahman rahim He has decreed mercy upon himself. That's the basis of his creation. So Allah commands us to have hope in him, in fear of him. But often we, we lose focus. We hope in our good deeds and we fear our sins. Uh, good deeds and sins are created things. But Allah asks us to hope in Allah. Allah asks us to fear Allah, to be mindful of Allah, to be conscious of Allah. So if we compare our actions to what Allah has given us, we may lose hope. But how can they compare to what Allah gives us? Our worship is, is going to have deficiencies. And this is why we seek forgiveness. The prophet, peace be upon him, said, none of you will enter Jannah due to his actions. And the prophet, peace be upon him, he had adab in talking about himself. He spoke to them saying, you, and they asked, not even you. They noticed that he didn't include himself. If someone was to enter paradise because of, of their good deeds, it would definitely be him that he negated it from himself as well. Not even me, unless Allah envelops me in his mercy. The mercy of the most merciful is without limits. Allah says, say, oh, my servants. In this verse, Allah says, say, oh, my servants. He doesn't say, oh, my righteous servants, it, because it doesn't matter what you did. Allah's doors of mercy are always open because he forgives all sins. And we know the, the hadith of the man that killed 99 people, right? And the scholar that advised this person wasn't just a scholar of the books. They were a scholar of, the, they, they, of, of knowing God. So he gave the man hope that God would forgive him, but he also gave him a challenge. He was trying to get to this town, right? So part of repentance is to take the means to get away from the sin. And that the hadith of the, of the person that killed 99 people, it all, also speaks to the virtue of Islamic knowledge. And many people, they're scared of knowledge because it gives them excuses or they think that it will make things hard. But really, we know that the more knowledge we have, it can make things easier. One of the secrets of the Quran is whenever Allah gives us a promise, he will also tell us how to apply that good. He tells us in the next verses in the Quran how to attain forgiveness and mercy. He tells us, and return to your Lord and surrender completely to him before the punishment comes, and then you will not be helped. So he tells us that the key is return and surrender. The general wor word is tawbah, to leave the sin, to have remorse, to make resolve not re to return to it. And this is the general sense of the word. Um, inaba is more than just repentance. Imam Kusheri says that inaba is repentance with sincerity. Tawbah 2.0. Or repentance coupled with directing oneself with resolve to turn to Allah. To repent and rectify your situation. Seeing how I can turn to him to leave the sin and return to the domain of submission and surrender. It's to look at what's causing you to slip up and change it. So this requires three things. It requires some self-knowledge, some reflection on what's going on wrong in your life. It, it requires acquiring knowledge on how to rectify it in the correct way. And the third step, putting trust in Allah and resolving to do the work to change. 
instead of wallowing in the self-imposed misery and negative uh, self-talk. And Allah w- warns us we must do this before the punishment comes. So we're given opportunities, but at some point, after submission, after having all, all these opportunities, punishment could descend. So we need to recognize that wishful thinking is, is useless. And this verse, it also helps us with others. Many in our family and our circles of friends may be distanced from Allah and far from the prophetic example. According to one narration, this verse was revealed about a particular companion, Washi, who killed Hamza. But when he entered Islam, he was worried about his state. And also there were some Muslims who were too embarrassed to migrate to Medina and were thinking, how could they be forgiven? The companions were amazed at this verse and asked the prophet if it was specific. And he said it was for Muslims in general. So in this verse, to sum up, Allah tells us, do not despair of his mercy. If he tells that to us, how dare us to try to make other people despair of Allah's mercy? No one makes other people despair of Allah's mercy except one that is ignorant of Allah and ignorant of the prophetic way. The last thing we want to do is to cause people to lose their hope. What we want to do, we want to help people to come back to God, to come back to the prophetic way by dealing with them in a beautiful way. So inshallah, we, we can try to implement dealing with other people in a beautiful way and being hopeful that Allah will forgive anything that we've done that is Uh, displeasing to God, and that no matter what we do, Allah can forgive us. Uh, May Allah bless you all throughout the week. May Allah grant you uh, provision spiritually, physically. If anyone's struggling with illness, may Allah send you healing. If anyone's struggling with your uh, money, please... uh, I ask Allah to bless you and give you all the best of this life and the next. And God bless your community. And may you get to be together physically very soon. Uh, I mean, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa salam. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much.